Okay, hello guys, and I'm proud to present my uh, final 2014 through 2015 winter forecast. Um, so we're going to be looking first off at the like teleconnections uh, in the sea surface temperatures. Um, and first we're going to look at the what's going to be affecting our temperatures across the United States. First we want to look to the PDO area, which is I've kind of dashed in this dark blue color shading. Um, it's when it's above average that really um, helps to create force that trough down into the east. Um, especially, uh, it doesn't hurt that um, the waters, these warm waters, are moving onto the shore. You gotta remember that if you live on the west coast, the uh, the air temperature is gonna be affected by the water. So when you get the warm air in here, that kind of uh, if, it, if the cold was going to be pushed down, it would be more towards the east. Um, it would be easier. Uh, more, more, there's more chance of that happening in the east and the west with this kind of a setup here. Um, Modiki, El Nino, that definitely helps. Um, if we were to have an east-based El Nino, that would be pretty much the opposite. Um, really looking at more cold in the um, cold in the west, uh, and I think that that would be a little bit more of a powerful factor than the PDO. So that would probably over um, override that. Uh, then these cold waters in here definitely will help. Um, yeah, let's move on to uh, this is the uh, Jams Tech, by the way. If I didn't uh, note that. But this is the air temperature, and as you can see, I kind of put this line here, uh, kind of where the jet stream might be. It's a little far south, but you get the point. Um, ridge in here, because there's those warm waters, the air above it is going to be above average, most likely also. So that's why this is like this, and this pushes down, pushes the cold. You see how it's really above average up here? Uh, that means that really it's blocking the cold air down, which is a good thing for cold lovers um, in the east. I'm going to try to go pretty fast throughout most of this because I have a lot of uh, stuff packed into this one 15-minute video. And then here's the factors that could uh, change the precipitation um, factors. All this in here is basically breeding grounds for storms. Um, especially in an El Nino because uh, the storm track, well, we'll get onto the storm track, but it's going to come across here, down into the Gulf, and then up. So really, these warm waters in here are helping a lot. Then the Gulf, uh, slightly above normal or average is just fine. And then even um, slightly below average is also fine. It's much better than below average. So really, this is good for storms. Um, and let's look at that precipitation, as you can see, uh, above average precipitation. And I went ahead and put the storm track kind of an idea. Let's look at some other people's forecasts real quick. Um, this is New Jersey Strong, 2014 through 2015 winter outlook. Warmer than normal, drier than normal, north wetter than normal south in this area. Below average temperatures, average precip in this blue area. Cool and wet in these two green areas. Colder than normal with wintry storms. I'm guessing some wintry storms in this pink area. And then strong storms in this red area. Um, Arctic blasts in this area. I'm not going to read through the rest. Just uh, kind of the highlighted areas. Which would be this blue area in this instance. Um, well below average temp temperatures. And above average snowfall slash precip. So that's definitely hinting at the fact that there will be precipitation besides snowfall. Obviously, uh, a lot of these areas aren't going to be all snow. Um, and uh, this is Texoma weather. Um, temperatures well below normal with above average precipitation um, in this area. Temperatures below normal and stormy above average snow, especially in the northeast. So, hinting at this area. Okay. Um, and I saved the potentially best for last. Um, this is US Weather Plus. Um, I've been associated with them for a while. Uh, really good people over there. Go ahead and like their Facebook pages. Um, they have a lot of them. Uh, 
go ahead and do that. Warm and dry for these areas, normal, wet and uh, warm and wet. Heavy mountain snow, major snow threat in this area. Average snow, some ice. Winter battle zone is going to set up in this area. Cool valley rain, uh, mountain snow, cool and very wet in this area. And then uh, Virginia Weather Network. Um, this is also a very, very good uh, Facebook page that I highly recommend you like. Um, above average snowfall in this area, icy and snowy, so that's basically what the definition of a battle zone is. Cool and wet in this area, average, uh, above average temps, drought continues, cold in this area. Okay. That's everybody else's forecasts. Um, if I put your forecast up there, I really enjoyed it and I agree with it. Um, not even if I fully agree with it, but it's just I uh, do think that it's definitely a possibility. Good possibility. Let's look at some of the storm tracks. Um, looks pretty messy, but what I want you to realize is um, you see there's three major sources that these storms come from. Right here is and the more, like, let's just call them noodles, or tracks, because um, there's the spaghetti model stuff. Um, if you do hurricane tracking and stuff like that, you would understand what I meant by that. But, um, so we've got a lot of tracks in this nor'easter track, uh, type track, which is the main, um, my main track for this winter. Um, this is the Miller A track. Then we've got the clipper system, which is the um, second most common track. And I'm gonna, uh, and then some of these turning into uh, Miller B nor'easters, especially this dark green one. You see this one? We had one like this last winter that uh, in Norfolk gave us here around a uh, quick three inches of snow. Heavy snow at times, but it only lasted a few hours. Um, clippers are some pretty fun storms. Um, and and if they come south of you, you typically are going to get all, um, all snow with these kinds of events. Um, and very rare that they come down here. I'm putting like a maybe like 15% chance of for every nor'easter that one would come down here. Um, and there's going to be a lot of them potentially. So, And then we've got this uh, panhandle hook or uh, panhandle panhandle cutter, I believe they're called, um, that comes into, like, the Seattle area, comes all the way down through, like, Colorado and stuff, uh, and then hooks up, and that can branch into, um, Appalachian Runner, which is the number one least likely track to happen that I have right here, um, for right now. And then the, the panhandle, uh, hook is, uh, second least likely, uh, Nor'easter being most likely, and then Clipper second likely. I'm gonna see, like, if I had to put an exact area where I would go if there was a lot of snow, um, it would be, uh, just inland, uh, like, maybe somewhere in this area, uh, just because look at how many tracks there is in this area that I put, um, yeah. Alright, now on to my forecast, spoiler alert, <laughs> um, precipitation forecast, above average in these two green areas. Slightly above average in these light green areas, uh, slightly below average in this tan area, uh, below average in this brown area, and well above average precipitation in this dark green area. Now let's look at the temperature forecast. Below at, sorry, typo. Above average uh, temperatures in this area, slightly above average. Dear Lord, um, <laughs> slightly below average in this area, below average, and well below average. I'm going to just fix that because that's really bugging me. Okay. Well below average in these areas. Uh, really, I think the southeast and deep south is really where the heart of the cold, as far as below average goes, um, heart of the cold is... Um, Right, you know, northeast kind of, it's going to be somewhere in the east. I can't really specify with this map, but it's probably going to be somewhere like Tennessee, Kentucky. I'd see a lot of cold, cold temperatures in that area. 
Um, let's look at snowfall compared to normal. Um, any one of these white uh, is typically going to be below average. Um, like, some areas like, like these, like, it could have been average, but I just didn't do it. Um, so a lot of areas are going to be inaccurate with this one. Uh, really what you see in the above a average is where I was just trying my hardest here in this one. Uh, so 100% would equal average. You get 100% of your uh, average snow. 133% of your average snow here um, in this kind of medium blue color. This dark blue, uh, kind of grayish looking color, 167% um, of your average snow. So that would equal uh, above average snow by far. Um, so I live in Virginia Beach. We're not really in the heart, so um, kind of pretty much above average, maybe just slightly, but um, I could be looking at um, that would be like maybe nine inches of snow or something, but areas, especially in the southern areas in this, could get a lot further just by one storm than 167%. Like, it can take, I've seen, I've gotten like 400% of my snow, average snow in one storm. I mean, it does not take a lot of snow to get that much. Something like 350%, but it's still a lot. Also, below, uh, below this line, no snow is expected, uh, with the exception of mountains. Keep that in mind, because I know a lot of these mountains would definitely get some snow. Uh, but as far as, like, flat lands, uh, flatlands, uh, no snow is expected underneath that. Now let's look at my overall forecast. This is actually my favorite part to make. Um, very messy. <laughs> That's the first thing I'm going to go ahead and note. Um, mountain snow in this, in these two, uh, light blue areas, above average temperatures in this kind of orange area, kind of yellow, what I, I, I would call it is mustard color, probably just kind of nasty, but that's what I described as, slightly above average temperatures, mostly rain in this area and this area. This area is just going to be kind of wet, in my opinion, uh, if we get some of those storms to really come in uh, north. That's kind of a hit or miss thing, uh, not for sure. Winter battle zone in this area, you see this dashed area, it's still going to be the battle zone in all these areas, but... I think that potentially for worst of winter compared to normal is a little bit more hardcore than winter battle zone. So I wanted to make sure that everybody knows that I do think that they'll be in both there. So a mix of the two, definitely. Average in this gray area, below average snow in this brown area, frequent snowstorms in this dark blue area, and then the red area potential for worst of winter. Um, compared to normal, and keyword here is compared to normal, because people are going to be like, what? How is, how is Richmond, Virginia going to get a worse, worse the winter? Like, how's the East Coast going to get worse the winter compared to the mountains, you know? Like, what the heck? Well, not going to be the worst of winter. Obviously, places like Minnesota, the Great Lakes, the mountains of Montana are going to be worse by far. But compared to normal, the red area is typically going to see the worst compared to normal, in my opinion. Um, so it's going to be most memorable memorable in these areas. Uh, whereas last winter, I would have put it in Minnesota, like Iowa, Indiana, you know, Wisconsin, Michigan, those areas. This winter, I think that since it's in El Nino, it's easy to say that the southeast and northeast would be... And by model guidance so far we've had, and what the sea surface temperatures would show, really the East Coast could have the worst of the winter compared to normal and most memorable winter. Um, most memorable for this winter, that area. Alright, uh, thanks for watching, guys. This has been my uh, final winter outlook. I will, um, this is the last update, but I will do kind of like now cast things. And I'm going to make my December forecast probably in the uh, next upcoming days. So, yep, can't wait for that. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye now.